Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with another video. And in this one, I'm going to copy, copy, <laughs> cover a topic uh, that I've covered in a number of my other videos. But I felt it kind of deserved its own video um, where I kind of just talk about this format overall and really uh, do kind of a deep dive into it and uh, give it its due, more or less, since it is my favorite uh, music delivery format ever. Um, I, of course, am referring to the humble compact disc. Futuristic, right? Because it's shiny. <laughs> At least that's what we uh, thought back in the old days, us old people did. Anyway, I'll put that back in the case. So, um... I'm going to talk about the history of this, uh, for, of the format. I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, a little bit about its early beginnings. Um, I'm going to talk about kind of how it's evolved over time. I'm going to talk about the present. And then, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about the future. Now, before I get too deep into this, uh, yes, I realized the compact disc was not the first optical format. Uh, that actually goes to LaserDisc. LaserDisc does predate um, CDs, but they were, you know, uh, they weren't a smashing success. They were uh, the size of, they, they were 12 inch, the size of LPs basically, and uh, extremely expensive, and they just weren't super successful in the marketplace probably largely due to cost yada 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 but we owe it a we owe laserdisc a bit of gratitude uh because obviously uh they refined the technology to you know perfect the compact disc and uh then obviously uh after the cd uh you know that led later to of course dvd and ultimately blu-ray so there you go. It, it, it's kind of a lineage. The great, great grandpappy of it all was Laserdisc. And then, of course, you know, we got down to the familiar size of CD, which, of course, as you guys are aware, DVDs and Blu-rays was identical size. So anyway, that's enough about that. Uh, as far as who invented uh, the idea of the CD, it was a guy named uh, James Russell. He uh, basically is credited with uh, inventing the idea of optical uh, recording and playback. Uh, basically, he was an audiophile, for lack of a better term, and uh, of course, at the time, what high, high fidelity was, was records, right? And he was thinking, man, there's got to be a better way to, um, you know, reproduce sound, something that doesn't physically contact the playback medium doesn't have uh, inherent surface noise and all the other issues that kind of go along with vinyl. He was looking to solve those problems, and that's kind of when he came up with the idea for CDs. And, well, you know, kind of went from there. Um, <clears throat> now, here's a bit of early history. As far as the actual physical size of it, um, basically, the, here's how they ended up with the size. Um, the CD was co-developed by Philips and Sony. Uh, Phillips wanted an 11.5 centimeter uh, size disc. Sony wanted a 10 centimeter uh, size disc. But they ended up with 12 centimeters because it was a neutral size, right? Neither really Sony or Phillips wanted it, but it's kind of what they ended up with, I think. Partially also due to what the manufacturing facilities they had were doing all that fun stuff. Um, but, of course, there is a bit of an urban legend, I don't know how much truth there is to this, that one of the engineers behind the CD wanted the uh, playback length to be long enough to um, contain all of uh, Beethoven's Ninth, and uh, the longest known recording of that, or performance of that, was 74 minutes, and they wanted that all to fit on one disc. So, that's the um, urban legend, le whatever, I don't know how true that is. <clears throat> excuse me, guys, or if it really was the corporate compromise. But, you know, go back in time, get a time machine, I'm sure you can find out for sure. Now, um, as far as the sampling and bit rate of CDs, how was that decided on, the 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz? Well, 
basically, it was kind of selected for two reasons. Um, and honestly, part of it was due to, uh, from what I understand, compatibility uh, to put digital PCM on a videotape at the time, right? And that was basically the format that would work on that. But also, um, you know, the, there was, you know, the Nyquist theorem was involved with this because 44.1 kilohertz can reproduce 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is basically the audible spectrum for human hearing. So when a CD is properly record or I'm sorry mastered the whole nine yards when it's done properly a CD can re reproduce everything you can hear uh, there's no there's nothing lost now uh, in the early days of CDs uh, players there was a whole lot of um, controversy surrounding uh, the DAX in them because they had like hard limits on the filtering uh, for the upper bands and Maybe some of the upper frequencies would get cut out, so there would be like audible ringing or something in uh, some of what actually was audible on the high frequencies. Honestly, I wasn't, you know, when CDs were new, I was extremely young, and uh, I don't own any CD players from 1982, so I can't really speak to this, how true this is. Um... You know, I don't know if there's anything to that or if it's really just a bunch of hooey because, like I said, that's the pretty early history of the format way before I ever jumped on board or even really knew what a CD was. So, you know, I can't really speak to that too much. And I do know that a lot of the early transfers of analog masters to CDs were done poorly as a crack and as a cash grab by the record companies, which is not exactly shocking, kind of like nowadays how we got a lot of vinyl um, pressings that are just digital masters. It's kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> it's funny how history just keeps repeating itself. Anyway, um, now, when CDs were new, and for a fairly long time afterwards, they were an absolute revelation in sound quality. Um, due to being the first uh, consumer digital format. <clears throat> there is no, there's no surface noise, no clicks, no pops. Uh, and of course, they CDs don't skip, assuming the player is, the CD player itself is working correctly and, you know, the disc is clean and not scratched up and in, in good condition, right? Uh, whereas analog playback uh, can have those issues. Right, um, now, shortly after CDs, uh, oh, one other thing. And when CDs were also first introduced, basically, they were introduced, these were introduced just to be a higher fidelity version of these, right? They weren't portable at the time. Uh, they were incredibly expensive. Uh, the first CD players cost around a thousand dollars. The CDs themselves cost about thirty bucks each. Ironic that that is now the price that new vinyl is often selling for. And CDs can be had for as, new CDs can be had for as little as five bucks. Interesting, right? So, um, and yeah, I think this was back in 1982 money. So thirty bucks back then would be equivalent to something now. I'm sorry, I don't have the inflation calculator in front of me, but it would be more than thirty dollars in today's money. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but shortly after CDs were introduced, the prices fell dramatically, both on discs and players. And of course, portable options started uh, popping up. Um, you know, obviously. Sony very quickly released a portable CD player, disc man, for lack of a better term, and of course, CD players started popping up in car stereos not long at all after the CD was introduced. Now, this is a bit of a side note, not really related to music, but since CDs can hold 700 megabytes of data, uh, that was a huge revolution for computer data back then and CD-ROMs because typical hard drive was only about 10 megabytes back then. So you had a removable disk that you could hold 700 megabytes on that really uh, helped fuel, not instantaneously, but fairly quickly after 
you know, CD, uh, CDs were introduced and CD-ROMs were introduced fairly quickly afterwards. That really did spur a ton of innovation in uh, computer programs and, of course, later on in game consoles a few years after that. Uh, so that, you know, we really owe a lot to the whole digital revolution to this format. Um, now, uh, what was what's funny about the sales of this thing? Uh, CDs, of course, were introed. Uh, they introduced the public in 1982, and they overtook LPs in 1988. It it only took six years for them to outsell LPs, which, given all the benefits of CD, that's not shocking. But of course, they wouldn't beat cassettes until sometime until the in the 90s. <laughs> You know, so uh, even back then, the uh, cheap and convenient uh, portable format el outsold the better. I mean, between uh, vinyl, CD, and cassette, obviously cassette's the worst sounding format. But it outsold both vinyl and CD for a while. And again, that was largely due to price and the fact convenience. I mean, you could take a cassette, put it in your Walkman, put it in your car, put it in your home stereo. It was the ubiquitous music format for a while. Um, and I sure as heck got my start with cassettes way, you know, for a few years before I started collecting CDs. Um, and, uh, but, you know, eventually CDs obviously destroyed everything else. Eventually CDs totally blew away cassettes and totally blew away LPs uh, for the most part and uh, not long after CDs became the music format of choice in the 90s uh, you know mp3 started to be a thing and it really started to spread like wildfire due to the fact that you could copy CDs to computers now of course at first those mp3 sounded like shit because the encoders weren't very good uh, and low bitrate was the order of the day. So the sound quality was definitely in the beginning, but it didn't take long at all for the encoders to get way better than what they were when they started. And of course, people started ripping at higher bit rates due to, you know, hard drive sizes going up through the roof. So it was no longer, it was totally fine and practical to have high bit rate MP3s or, you know, lossless FLAC files or whatever on your machine. Which, of course, you know, brings us to the uh, present day. Um, CD sales, of course, have tum absolutely crashed compared to where they were. Um, and, and they are decreasing. But the decline has actually started to slow and may actually be leveling off. Now, CDs may stabilize at a certain point and not fall any further. Uh, you know, and the and that lat level may be high enough to continue to ensure that new CD releases are, you know, keep coming. But you know, of course, that's pure speculation. Uh, you know, as far as the future of CDs, who knows? Uh, like I said, uh, the sales could stabilize, and and everybody could be hunky dory, and they still continue to sell music on CD. Uh, sales could continue to fall and get to such a low point that uh, record labels ultimately decide it's not worth releasing music on CD anymore. That could happen. Um, you know, and if that does happen, then maybe, you know, who knows, in 20 to 30 years, CDs may be retro cool again, just like uh, vinyls are nowadays. You never know. But for now, for right now, and hopefully the foreseeable future, they are the highest quality, most versatile physical format that we have. Yeah, I know that some people could argue, oh, what about DVD audio or super audio CD? To which I say, <laughs> those failures in the marketplace, yeah, those don't really count, sorry. Um, but, you know, I think we all owe CDs a debt of gratitude, uh, basically because of what they have brought, not just, you know, they have really have changed the world a lot in many, many, many ways. Um, obviously, huge revelation for um, music playback. I mean, the fidelity on a properly mastered, properly done CD is unbeatable. I mean, it, they sound absolutely fantastic when done correctly. 
Um, you know, nothing sounds better than a CD that's done well. Not even, it, it, and I know this is going to be sacrilege to a lot of vinyl people out there, but I'm sorry, tough. A uh, properly mastered CD beats any vinyl, period, because it doesn't have the inherent issues that vinyl has. It just doesn't. Um, you know, and uh, another thing that CD really brought, because it's digital, it brings consistency, right? If you want to hear music as the artist intended, right, uh, you're probably going to hear it much closer representation of that on digital than you will on analog. And the reason for that is every anal piece of analog playback equipment is going to sound kind of different, right? No two turntables are really going to sound identical to each other. Now, if you get, of course, if it's the same exact model with stock settings, you know, you don't, you have the stock cartridge and stylus and all that, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're probably going to sound identical, but every single model of turntable is going to sound different from every other model of turntable. It's just the way it is because it's the nature of the medium, and that's fine. That's part of analog, that's part of vinyl's charm because you can really kind of customize the sound to whatever you like with a turntable. Whereas with a CD player, um, as long as it's competently manufactured, right, and has a decent DAC in it, one CD player is going to basically sound identical. They're all going to sound basically the same, right? It's just going to happen. Uh, so you get much more consistency with CD than you do with vinyl. So that's another part of it. So anyway, I'm kind of done uh, talking about this topic. I'd really like to hear what you guys think. Um, what do you think of the format? Love it, hate it, whatever. What do you think the future of it is? Any thoughts are welcome. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you did like this, thumbs up. If you hate me, thumbs down. Share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks a whole lot for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.